Hello Murphy staff. I hope that you're all well rested and staying warm. I missed the opportunity to talk with you on the SIP day, but wanted to give you an abbreviated version of my presentation through this podcast. I wanted to take a few minutes to review a few things that I've gleaned from my professional readings and from observations of you uh, around the building. While I know that we have enough things going on, reflecting on these while we plan our lessons and instruct our students will help to ensure that they are learning as much as possible. To best reach our students, our lesson planning and instruction must incorporate as many senses as possible. Whether we're introducing a concept or introducing vocabulary, students need the opportunity to see things, hear them, write them, and say them. If you can incorporate taste, that's great. But pictures, any sort of visuals, graphic organizers, where kids are seeing concepts, seeing vocabulary, and connecting it in their brain are key to learning. If kids are hearing things that are spoken by a teacher, hearing it from other students, hearing it on tapes and songs, YouTube videos, whatever, it will help ingrain it in their brain. If kids have the opportunity to write things, whether they're connecting the words that they're hearing on paper, they're typing it on a keyboard, they're writing it in the air, writing it on their desk, that will connect a concept in their brain. Lastly, if they're saying it constantly, parroting information back to teachers. Um, if you've given the kids a homework assignment and you have them just repeat it straight back to you, or any new vocabulary, they are, you're making sure that they're saying it back to you as a whole group, saying it to each other as students, and then saying it to themselves, uh, really incorporates a great deal in their learning. The second thing I wanted to talk with you about was our progress to date. As you know, we've been paying particular attention to the percent of our students that make their target growth. And we started, this is our uh, growth portion right here. And while we know that 90 to 100 percent of students are going to make some sort of growth, on average, 50% of students across the nation are expected to make their target growth. So this is a report that we've looked at in the past um, that shows a percentage of students who have made their growth in reading each quarter, or for the year. Then last year, we took a look at our students who had made growth. So this is the, a graph showing the percent of students that made growth and making target growth from fall of 2012 to the spring of 2013. And as you would expect, all of our kids, most of them anyway, are showing that they've learned something. And different percentages at each grade level are making their target growth. And overall, we are beating the national average on the percent of kids who are making their target growth. In reading last year, once again, most of our kids made some sort of growth. And in the target growth areas, we were around uh, the 54 percent average for the whole school with some pockets of students uh, doing um, over 10 percent better than the national average. At the beginning of this school year we saw that some of the other schools in our district had some very impressive percentages for the percent of kids who made their target growth in reading and math. We made a goal that we would aim to have 65% of our students making their target growth in math and reading for 2013 and 2014. While the NWA window has been set mostly after break instead of before the break this year, we don't have comprehensive data to show you at this point in time, but we are seeing some promising results. At present, data from six of the groups that tested before break are available to us. With the new online version of MAP, the NWA is also able to give us a percent of students that have made their mid-year target growth. So here are the six different classes that have tested before break, or that we have results for. In Group A, 32% of kids and in math and 48% of kids in reading made their target growth. In Group B, 64.3 and 57.1. In group C, 45.5 and 70.8 in reading. In group D, 57.1, 72.4. In 
in group E, 68 and 75.9. And in group F, we had 61.9% of the kids making target growth in math and 81% in reading. Clearly, overall, these are some very impressive numbers. While we have some things to work on, we're seeing some really awesome progress. Remember that these positives and these areas for opportunity are a reflection of all of us. As our master schedule is set up so that student learning is maximized by the cumulative strengths of all of our staff. As we look at our data, this is a great starting point for a second semester where we can progress on the positives and take a few things to work on and look at those groups of students and look at their results to really target our instruction for them. So lastly, good job. Keep it up. Our students deserve our very best and it's showing with those results that are way over the 50 percentile on the previous slide. So I'm always proud to be able to say that the Murphy staff is a dedicated group of hardworking, collaborative professionals committed to ensuring that each child embraces safe, respectful, and responsible behavior and exceeds their growth targets in reading and math. Have a wonderful second semester.